a brighter note, F1 Academy was back this weekend. Yes. And it was really exciting. Lots going on. A ton of action. So, Catherine, you want to... I'll kick to you for the for the Academy update. You were more in tune with it than I was this weekend because I'm yes. on vacation. <laughs> You're on vacation and I had a little bit more time to, to watch the races in my downtime you know running a summer camp um totally fair you were you were busy you know having chilies in chili which is totally something that you know one must accomplish in their life um i'm not even kidding when i say it's on my bucket list it was on my bucket oh, list for sure to eat at chili's in chili <laughs> yeah which i did so <laughs> so we've been talking a lot lately about abby pulling she's the alpine driver on the grid um she had won four straight races before American Haas driver Chloe Chambers broke her four race win streak to win race two, um, which is really cool, especially when you think like you don't think of Haas as necessarily a race winning team, um, but she has the Haas organization's only win in single seater, I think. It, I think it could be that. I think that's pretty fair to say, yeah. Yeah, and they, it, she had a massive points haul. So the, the race one podium was Abby Pulling, who she just went off the line and disappeared. Um, Nerea Marti, who is from Spain, it was her home race. She's the Tommy Hilfiger driver, and her car and race suit are just the coolest. Love. Um, and apparently bet- between the last race in Miami and this race in uh, in Barcelona, she got married. Oh, good for her. Love that. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, and then, yeah, and then Chloe's Chambers, she finished third. She actually qualified second um, in both races, and um, she lost position and was able to um, – she lost a couple positions, I think, but then gain, gained back. Um, and then race two, she just beat Abby pulling straight off the line from P2 and just disappeared off into the sunset. And at one point, she was up by, like, seven seconds, which is – you know, sometimes it's it's a margin that you see in the academy, but not always. Um, and they had been, you know, especially like the top part of the grid had been a little bit closer. Abby pulling tends to to pull away. She managed to finish P2 and just kind of stayed P2 the entire race, trying to hunt Chambers down and just couldn't. Um, and then um, Hamda Alkabasi, who's one of the Alkabasi sisters on the grid. Um, she's the Red Bull racing driver, which is different from the Red Bull Academy driver or the V-Carb driver, who are all driving for the same team um she finished in third which was um her team's like the actual constructor um mp motorsports best finish so far and there has been like a ton of you know space put um away in er, words um there has been a ton of distance put between Abby pulling um, at the top of the driver's standings oh, yeah. and everyone behind. Yeah, it's like a- almost absurd how many points you can come away with in a-, a Formula One Academy weekend, especially when you have, you know, two races. But she has 147 points. So she's ahead of Dorian Pon, who is still recovering from broken ribs, which it turned out the broken ribs were not actually from racing at Spa with Formula Regional Europe, but actually from a biking accident that same weekend um so basically drivers need to stay off bikes because i was gonna uh, say lance what are we doing on bikes guys stay yeah, off the bikes so- so Pawn is um, in P2. She's got 81 points. Chloe Chambers shot up from P4 to P3, um, though she's tied on points with Pawn, but by like aggregate finish, she's um, she's in that third position. Nerea Marti um, also moved up from P6 to P4. She's got 63 points. And then Bianca Bustamante from McLaren, um, who had a pretty anonymous weekend. It, was, it wasn't really a great weekend for her in Spain. She's got 57 points. Nice. And then, yeah. uh, so for constructors, so it's a little different. I mean, a little different because, like, in F1 Academy, it's a stock car. So it's not like all these different constructors are constructing these cars like we have in F1, but they're mm-hmm. teams. So right. where are we at in the team standings? So there was a lot of movement in the team standings over the weekend. Um Prima Racing, which um, they had led the standings the first couple of weekends, they're actually down to P3. Um, Roden Motorsport, who had been P2, is now in P1. They've got 176 points. Compost Racing went from P3 to P2 um, with the biggest gainer of the weekend with 71 points from the three drivers on the team. Um, Prima Racing only gained about 24 points um, in P3. And then MP Motorsport, 
Walmart moved up from P5 to P4. They've got 76. And then ART is, is down in the bottom. Or wait, was MP Motorsport ahead? Hold on. I, I have to look because um, this will <laughs> bother me. It's right here. No, MP Motorsport was P5. So MP Motorsport and ART Grand Prix flip-flopped. Um, and they're only three points apart. So there, there's still so many opportunities for points. There's plenty of opportunity for ART Grand Prix to, you know, get a significant points haul next time we see them. And the next time we will see the Academy is not going to be it for a while um, because they're not back until the first race after the F1 summer break in August at Zandvoort and the Dutch Grand Prix. Oh, I love Zandvoort. It's one of my so favorites. excited for Zandvoort yeah. in the future. We have, we have races to get to first. In the future. 